description of this. Um, so my passion is looking at not just how do we build the spaceships and the systems that will get us off planet, but who are we gonna be when we get there? I like to say, you know, a lot of us, I was definitely inspired by Star Wars and Star Trek, and I wanted, you know, a lot of us got inspired to go to into engineering and to build the replicators and the communicators and the spaceships. And I got inspired to build the culture that we see in science fiction, um, to go along with the spaceships. Because I figured if we get to Mars, and we're just being the same jerks that we are here, it's really not that <laughs> different. It's not gonna be really as fun or as cool as we want it to be. So um, my job is to help us um, become the people that we want to be when we're on Mars. Um, so, oh, fantastic. I've got this fantastic piece of technology here. Um, so I'm interested in, in how do we use our passion for space to drive our own personal growth and development and our society's growth and development. And that's why I call myself a Jedi trainer because it's an easy way to explain to people like what it is we're doing. We want us to create like a Jedi culture. So the first thing I did, as uh, Dave was telling you in 2001, George and I co-created Yuri's Night, which is the World Party for Space. And so for the last 16 years, we've been using, a our first effort was a party to use space to bring the world together. And so we have um, events all around the world, and it was, the whole intention was to show that we have a, a Soviet anniversary, Yuri Gagarin's flight, and, uh, and a US anniversary, the shuttle flight, and that we can use the power of space to show, make the world a smaller place, and that, that it brings us all together. So we've been doing that around the planet. Uh, that's, that's us in 2002. Um, this is the part, this is one, one of my favorite parties we've done. Uh, this was at NASA Ames. This is probably 2009. Oh, sorry, 2007. Good thing I put a text in my slides. Um, we basically threw a giant rave in the hangar, in the Sophia hangar at NASA Ames. Um, and we had a DJ going, and we even brought the music down at 11 p.m. and had Chris McKay come out and do a talk on looking for life on Mars. And we were a little nervous about how it was gonna go. Um, when you bring the music down at a rave and put on a science talk. But, um, <laughs> but it was fantastic. You, if you've know, you seen Chris McKay, he's, he's great. So they're eating out of his hands. He was like, we're gonna look for life on Mars. It's like CSI Mars. And everyone's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was really fun. They had an air show there, you know, Buzz Aldrin was there, you know, uh, Steve Wozniak. It's, so it's been a lot of fun I'm doing that. Here in LA, um, I host the LA event. We do it under the space shuttle in LA, uh, which is a lot of fun to party under the space shuttle. Um, two, oh, sorry. two years ago, we had um, Buzz Aldrin with, with us partying under the space shuttle in LA. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, so that was a lot of fun. We, um, it's definitely a unique event, you know, bringing together, uh, we bring together the artists and the musicians together with the scientists and the engineers. Um, and because, you know, they, we can give them access to the, you know, the excitement of what the real space story, and they can help us communicate our vision to the world in a way that's, that's compelling. And so it's a really great partnership that we, we, we build. So we did the party, um, Yuri's Night happens every April, around April 12th, that's the, the dual anniversary. Um, in LA next year will be April 7th, Saturday, we do it on the Saturday before. Um, if you want to join us, and, and this year, like LA is also involved with a extra, we're throwing an extra party under the shuttle this year. Next Friday night is the 21st, we're throwing a party to celebrate the 21st, 25th anniversary of Dr. Mae Jameson's um, historic flight into space. She was the first woman of color to fly in space. And so we're doing a, mm. an extra spark party under the shuttle next Friday. If, if you want to join, um, you can get tickets at uh, 25strong.com. Um, and you can even, we even have a discount code for Yuri's Night folks, uh, YN for Yuri's Night 25 for 25, the 25th anniversary, um, if you want to join us for a, a party next Friday. And, the, and we're also doing a whole Nexus event that whole weekend in Santa Monica. Um, we're doing an opening reception on Thursday night at Rand, if anyone wants to join for that, and then um, other sessions throughout the weekend in, in Santa Monica. Um, just Google 100 Year Starship as the host in Nexus in Santa Monica, and it should be fun. We have our science fiction award banquet that night and things like that. People having someone from The Expanse come out, which would be pretty cool. Ah, this, I've got too happy a hand for this. Um, you know, as we talked about, we also got involved with Virgin Galactic. Um, in 2005, George and I bought our tickets to fly with Virgin Galactic. We became customers. 
Um, and I was really excited about getting to work with Virgin Galactic or getting to be a part of that family because Richard Branson, who's the, the founder and chairman of, of Virgin, uh, is just such an extraordinary human being. This is him standing at the top of Necker Island. Um, and he just has a beautiful attitude towards the world and he has, gives back so much. He's working so much with the with trying to transform business and, and the carbon war room and, and giving back with uh, Virgin Unite and all the work that he does um, with the elders and with the oceans. Um, and so it's really a, a pleasure to get to work with, with him because when he, to he talks about um, opening space for good, um, he really means it on all levels. And, and all levels. And what I love about it is um, when he does things, he does it with love. Um, he doesn't. I work with a lot of you know high-powered business types and um, like James Cameron on our. We did an ocean. We did a move. I did a work on a the movie set with James Cameron to do the Aliens of the Deep filming. And you know he's. We would always give him a hard time on set. Cause we're like he's got a really bad reputation in Hollywood for being really hard driving. And we're always like James, why are you why are you yelling at everyone? I'm like well, it, it produces results. <laughs> and since he's got the highest grossing movies of all time, it's hard to argue with it. But but it, but I but we talked to James Cameron about it. Like you know, what if you could produce those results and still be you know gracious and respectful? <laughs> uh, and, he, and actually, I you know I've seen him more recently, and he's, cause he said he's mellowed. People say he's mellowed <laughs> age, and and he's really inspired by Shackleton. I think he even wants to do a movie about Shackleton, the the um, Antarctic explorer. And really, because he really admired Shackleton, because he was one of those leaders who could produce results, incredible results, keeping all of his crew alive on the ice in Antarctica for two years, um, with morale and with respect and with lifting people up. And so that's what, what I want. What I'm really interested in bringing to us as an industry, and uh, and using our passion and our drive for Mars to help drive us to become better, better species, better people, and better species. So I know George already showed you some of the eye candy. So usually when I'm giving my talks, I have to put in some fun shots of uh, what we're doing at Virgin Galactic and our beautiful spaceport in New Mexico. Um, and what I really wanted to talk to you guys about today is um, the Jedi training that we do. And so at Virgin Galactic, I'm the lead Jedi trainer, and we offer um, in the spring semester and in the fall semester eight sessions of Jedi training to anyone on the company who wants to participate. And it's really a lot of fun. Um, you know, I talk about how what I do is um, people physics. So I say that the most complicated subsystem of any space vehicle is the people who are building it or the people who are operating it. Um, mostly because there's no equations that model our human behavior. We're, we're just a little too unpredictable and, and quirky. And so it really a, a, adds a lot of complication and actually um, has caused a lot of challenges in our industry and, and, and some fatalities as well. And so we have to be really mindful as a community about how we treat each other and, and how we listen to each other and how we work together as teams because what we're doing in space um, is life or death and um, sometimes little disputes that would be nothing on earth could um, could be catastrophic in a really a really vulnerable environments of a space station or uh, a Mars base. And so our first lesson in genetic training is that everything you do matters. We talk about how you walk into a meeting Every sigh, every eye roll, every sarcastic comment lands. People hear it. People pick it up. I talk to our, our fresh out people coming straight out of school. And I, you know, I tell them, that, you know, wherever you are on the org chart, it doesn't matter. Like, you make a difference in what you bring to the company, how you walk in every morning, how you greet people, how you say hello, how you make eye contact, how you remember people's names. All these things make a difference. You matter wherever you are. Um, I love to, so, so usually on this slide I like to quote my husband, so it's sort of funny to have him in the audience for this. Um, but one of my things that he likes to say that I love is that all your problems look small from low Earth orbit. <laughs> <laughs> Even that hurricane kind of looks small from low Earth orbit. Um, and it, it, it's one of the really gifts of space life is, is the perspective that it gives us. And when you can get perspective on your life and on yourself, and really look at uh, things from a distance. It can help me calm down when I want to just scream at my kids um, and get some um, some space on what you're looking at, and and be able to take take a take a moment to think about how you really want to react, how you, who you how what you really want to be remembered for. I mean, in these especially in these days where every some angry tweet you fire off could um, 
this could follow you around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So just to be really um, thoughtful and careful about um, what you're saying and doing and keeping that perspective that space gives us on, maybe this isn't such, a, there's actually, I don't know if you ever, I just, I'm really into the, movie, the musical Hamilton right now and there's a great line, after Burr shoots Alexander Hamilton in the famous duel in the early 1800s, they, they, there's a song in the musical version of Hamilton where Burr says, you know, maybe the world was wide enough for Hamilton and me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to kill him. I mean, maybe, maybe the planet's big enough for all of us to be here together. So it's a good thing to think about. Maybe, maybe the world's wide enough for all of our different things. Jedi rule number one, don't throw anyone under the sand crawler. <laughs> so I'd love to... Uh, yeah, so making it fun and just the idea that we're all in this together. I mean the space community, you know, we what I love about our community is that we have a bond. We share a common love for space and we share that. And a rising tide lifts all boats. So being respectful and inclusive of everyone and not saying like, well, their ideas are stupid and our ideas are right. And being like, well, you know, they have a different idea and you know, we wish them we're excited for them to succeed and we're really passionate about what, you know, our our mission too. So, you know, whether it's somebody, you know, on your team at work, or somebody... Are we trying to fix yeah, give you a little chest. Give it a drink. Thanks, sir. Um, you know, not to throw your competitors under the bus, because in the, in the grand scheme of things, once we get to 12 different star systems, they're not going to be your competitors. They're, they're all, they're, they're all, they're all going to be... You're going to walk into a bar, and this guy's going to have a sweatshirt that says Earth on it, and be like, Earth! I'm from Earth, too! That's awesome! <laughs> uh, so, you know, getting a big enough, uh, you know, tent that includes everyone. You don't have to throw anyone under the bus. And, or a co-worker, you know, like, well, I got my stuff on time, but these guys are the ones getting everything late. You know, it's like, well, you know, what can we do to help them? What can we do to get, because we, we want the project to be on time, don't we? So how can we help them? No one's fault. Let's make it work. Um, so, yeah, so it's, a, it's been a fun journey. It's, um... Uh, you know, I'm learning and growing. I'm, I'm still not the Jedi I want to be, um, but I'm working on keeping a beginner's mind and remembering to always keep training and developing myself. And my message to all of you is to keep looking on training and developing yourselves and always looking. There's a whole bunch of things out there, just like the same way we didn't used to understand radiation. And then, you know, Mary Curie did a lot of work and sort of figured it out. Like, uh oh, this stuff is a. Uh, this is a big deal. We gotta figure this, we gotta learn how to harness this. I think there's a lot of other things that humanity hasn't learned to harness yet. Um, and our own potential and, and, and power is one of them. And I think that's something that as an industry we can pull together and figure out we can bring back to our whole species. Um, and that could be one of the biggest spin-offs that comes from space flight, is uh, helping humanity, as Yoda would say, give up anger, fear, and aggression. So I invite you guys to keep working on your own Jedi training. Um, I have a, I'm working on a book right now. It's called The New Right Stuff um, to help people who want to like create. Because I think that the people in the early in the Apollo days um, had the right stuff. They they had the grit. They had the courage. They had the stamina. It, and they had the endurance and the strength. And I think for the next for the next wave of space exploration, what we need to do is build on that and add in a whole other level of skill sets that we're also going to need, which is vulnerability and authenticity and honesty um, and community. Compassion. And so that's, for me, the new right stuff. And that's the taking things to the next generation. So I encourage, if you're interested in um, checking out an advanced copy of the new right stuff, you can go to my website, lorettawhitesites.com. There's um, some pre-publication versions of it there. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Loretta Whiteside, sorry, Loretta Dalgo. I've had this more than 11 years. Mm. Um, and really my message to all of you is just to be fully who you are and come do what you came to Earth to do. Because I believe that if each of us fulfilled our own personal mission, what you're here to do, that we get it all done. <laughs> um, so yeah, so follow your dreams and you'll give others the permission to follow theirs too. Thank you very much. Bravo. <laughs>